we decided to do a new bottom bracket on Alan's bike because the rotor bottom bracket will not work for Shimano spindles. Shimano spindles are 24 and the rotor bottom brackets are 30 millimeters. So if I were to try to use the Shimano crank set on the rotor bottom bracket, not only would the, the space be too big for it to slide through, it would also need a particular adapter. I would have to purchase an adapter that would make up for the difference in the circle of that hole because the rotor spindle is thicker and also the length. So that means they would have shims in there. Once you start going that route, then you start leading to squeaking and creaking and all of that. I didn't want to deal with any of that. And so it was very inexpensive to just get the bottom bracket that is designed and machined to work with Shimano 24 millimeter spindles. That's what we're doing here. That's why we're removing the bottom bracket and replacing it with a new one. This is a press fit bottom bracket, guys. All right, so this is how you remove a press fit bottom bracket. The reason I, I took it off first is I want to show you there are different kinds. If you have the kind on your bike, and it's kind of hard to tell. You want to make sure if your bike, you see this is sitting in a cup. The bearings, I just put this tape on here because when I store it, I want to mark which side came from the drive side. I'm not going to reuse this. It's very usable, but I'll put it in the parts bin just in case somebody has a need in the future. And if this fits, they can use that. But I'm changing this on Alan's bike because he requires a different size bottom bracket because his spindle with Shimano is shorter. This one accommodates what they call the 30 millimeter spindles, the longer spindles. So this is called like a PF30, BB Bright, they call it a B Bright. Now, since this bearing sits in a cup, that determines what tool you use. The tool I'm going to use since the bearing comes in a cup, there are two kinds of tools that Park Tool makes. I will put the names up here. This one that I currently have here is called the RT1. Okay, this is a wider one. And because if you look at this bottom bracket, it's huge. So this is a size tool that would fit. They have an RT, I believe is 90.3 or something like that. It's a lot narrower. So when you slide this in there, these flanges are not wide enough to fit because this is how they fit. They fit in here. And that's how you hammer them up out of the bike. I wanted to take it out, show it to you, because if you're doing it for the first time, you kind of need to know what the goal is. It's a lot better to teach this way than have it in the bike. So normally when it's going in the bike, you press it in, and I will do another section when I'm putting in the new cups in here to show you how you press these in. They're pressed into the, two, into the frame using a, 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 a cup press. You can use a headset press with the right adapters, but they're pushed in. You never want to push them in at an angle. I'm just placing them in by hand. And you can see the tolerances on this thing is actually good because they're nice and tight. So when I do the other one, I will use Loctite because I don't want any creaking. I'm sure they used a little bit. It doesn't look like they used much. But since this was developed for Cervelo, the tolerance is very, very close. When you have a different frame that you buy a bottom bracket from like wheels manufacturing or whatever, the tolerances sometimes leave a little bit of gaps. And that's when you need a, a certain compound of Loctite, the thicker ones to fill bigger gaps. There's not much of a gap in here. I don't even think I'll even need Loctite, but I'll do it just to be sure. Cause I like, I don't like my clients to bring the bikes back for the same problem. So a thin film of Loctite, order Loctite 641 for Allen's bike. And that should be perfect for this. So you can see it sits in there like that. I'm just going to do one side. Both cups come in. There is a middle. You see this little plastic thing? That's just a middle tubing. It's like a sleeve that they sit in. Some of them are black and they're different colors, but together they end up looking like the old style bottom bracket when they're together like that. All of that goes in the frame. So all you want to do is this cup will slide in and that's how it is. So since we're talking about removal right now, I want to focus on that, but I wanted to show you how they sit if you've never done that before so you can kind of know. So what you do when you're removing them is make sure you're using the right tool. That's very important because you don't want them to bend and try to start coming out sideways. It can stress your frame. 
you push this in just like you would do a headset cup. It will go all the way through even if the other one is there. I'm not going to bother doing that side because it's the same. It's just the opposite reversal. You do this and watch. It snaps right there. It snaps. After it gets past the bearing, it snaps in because those flanges open and they just grab the bearing right there. It's the bearing because it's a part of the cup. It's the bearing you're banging against, not this plastic thing or you would damage it. So that, that tool is really important. Don't try to make your own tool and try to go cheap because you're dealing with your frame here. And then what you would do is, I'm just going to show from this side. I think maybe if I went this way, it would probably be better. And all you would do is you want to bang this side of the tool. See right there? Let me go sideways so you can see the cup come out because it's going to fall. Let me move this wheel. So what you want to do is I have a towel on the ground here. You always want to be ready to catch it if you can or put something down there. It's not a big deal. But basically you bang that side. You're going to have to hammer it. I basically have already knocked it out and I just put it in for this demo. But you're going to hammer it. And because of that, you want to make sure that you're holding your frame. See where my hand is? Brace the bottom bracket as you hammer from the opposite side. So you will probably be standing on this side of the bike holding this bottom bracket because you don't want the frame taking all the shock. You want to hold the frame, hold the bottom bracket and just hammer this out like this and it falls out. And then you slide the tool the other way, flip it around, slide it into the other cup to where it comes in and the flange opens. That's how you get them out. So I wanted to do that to make that really clear. I hope that worked. And basically, when you bang them out, they come out like that. So all I did was, you can see in there, you can see the bearing, that aluminum ring. That's where those flanges sit. They slide in. Let me do this. They slide in from this side that you can see on the bike. You put them in. Put the tool in. Imagine that's the bottom bracket. You slide that in like this. You slide. Keep sliding. Right there. Now let me see if you can see. So you can see how it looks. Basically it sits in there and it's nice and tight. So you, what I did to get this out is I popped this side about halfway. Then I took, I left it in the frame. I didn't take it out all the way. So you imagine it's like this. This is really important. Makes it easy for you. This partially had come out. After I banged on it a few times, you can feel it moving. When it partially came out, I stopped, leaving it in the frame, pulled the tool out the other side, went to the other bottom bracket on that side like that, slid this in to where it came out like this, and it popped into the other side and then banged. Once I got both of them partially out, then I decided to take out one cup completely. The reason is that there's the wedged in there so much that so well that if you take out one cup completely, the hole now becomes nice and big, too big to where this tool can move now and you can mess up the other one. Especially if you're planning on reusing, which they don't recommend anyway. But if you take it out like I did, it comes out brand new, no damage. So you do this side kind of halfway, bang it because you have to break the seal. Once it bangs and you feel it moving, stop, loosen, the, bang the other one out of being too tight. Once they're both kind of loose, then you take out either one. I hope that's clear. But that's how you remove a press fit bottom bracket. Now, there are different kinds of press fit bottom brackets. If you have one of the ones that don't have a cup and this bearing is sitting in your frame, Park has a different tool. It's called a drift. And you put that in from the other side. You slide that in to actually push the bearing out of your frame because this will be like your frame. This is called a drift. And what this is used for is some frames come with the bottom bracket, I mean, the, the bearing nested inside the frame and not in a cup like this. See, this is a cup. That's a gasket. Then a cup come with this gasket that seals, keeps the grease protected. You can see it's already lubed. 
you press against this. You don't want to press against that. So we leave that there. I just want to show you just how this is nested in a cup. If this one's nested in your frame and not in a cup, you would use this drift. And the drift would basically go in the frame between this bottom bracket. This will line up with that hole that you see right there that keeps it straight. And you would use a mallet to just tap out the bottom, uh, the bearing on the opposite side. You would do this side from the other side. That's what the drift is for. These two prongs, you see the little indentation there? That, that nests against the bottom bracket, the circle of the, of the bearing in there. And then you just tap it out. It's only for bearings that are installed in the frame without a cup. But you don't want to not have this tool if your bottom bracket is designed that way because you can ruin the part. This one is uh, the BBT. 90.3 it's almost like the rt one that i showed you the last time but it's just smaller same design just a smaller form factor depending on the kind of bottom bracket size that you have you may need to use the little one so that's the only difference it works the same way you slide it in there and this pops behind the bottom bracket and you tap it out from the other side with a mallet um and you can also use a hammer All right, legends, I wanted to add this uh, for those of you who are trying to figure out if you have a bike that has a press fit, it's important that you know your the width of the bottom bracket shell and the dimension here in the diameter of this circle. So this one here, you can use a caliper, it's actually more accurate because you got two little teeth. You measure the width of the bottom bracket shell. Don't let it touch the press fit if it's in there because it's got a little bit of a lip. You want to put it on the actual frame and get this measured. So on this bike it's 79 millimeters which lets you know what kind of bottom bracket they have in there or what kind because they have on the press fit they got the BB ride and the B ride and the PF30 all that kind of stuff so when you this bike came with rotor and this is a rotor press fit 4630 so I had to measure this dimension and this diameter here which is what I'm doing now to determine like this one here let's see and you want to measure from edge to edge because that determines what you've got like right here this is 45 six um, so that kind of lets you know whether you have a BB ride California or just a B ride or you know the different standards that they have so that when you start trying to get replacement parts. Those are the questions that they would ask you. So if you have a bike like this with a press fit, measure the dimension of the bottom of the width of your shell and the diameter here, and know that and record that. So if you ever need replacement parts, that's what you want to communicate to the people who are selling those parts. So I wanted to just add that in here for this video. You don't want to use your press against this sleeve because you can ruin it. It's got rubber around a metal insert that really protects your, and it's important that you remember which side they come from because it's best to put it in the position they came in. So what I'm gonna do for the left side of the bike, I'm gonna place it on the left here on this paper. And it's also important that you read the instructions for whatever bottom bracket. I got this bottom bracket from Rotor because Rotor works with Cervelo and Rotor knows the dimensions of this hole. When Cervelo designs this frame, they have access to the specifications. I'm sure the other guys do, but I didn't want to take a chance. These guys were the only one that made this to where I would use it without any um, adjusters, like, for example, any kind of shims to fill gaps or anything. So I don't want Alan to have creaking later on. And so what I'm also going to do is I'm going to use Loctite in here, which is recommended. You don't have to because this stuff fits so well. Now, the way they work is I'm going to pop. You see this side here that says 4624 BB Bright L. This is the side that goes on the non-drive side. That's the reason why you need to read the instructions 
for installing each bottom bracket because they're different. So I'm gonna separate this from the sleeve. That inner part is just a sleeve and this is a cup. And all of them go in the bike. So you have to take that out from one side and what I'm doing, I'm taking out the non-drive side and that's all I'm gonna do. And this goes in here. See, when I drive fit it, look, the tolerances, there is no gap. So I'm only using the Loctite for extra security. So I'm gonna apply the Loctite. The thing with the Loctite is, they have an activator. There's an activator that you have to put on there first. And what this does is, this allows you a little more time for the Loctite to cure. And I'm really just gonna do where the cup sits, right in the front here. I've already cleaned out the frame. So this is called a primer. This allows you to have more time for the thing to set, for the Loctite to set. The, um, the activator is not really required, but it's just a good idea. It imp improves the curing. It's almost kind of like an acetone in a way. And all I'm doing is the first centimeter inside the frame. I'm gonna go on the other side and do the same thing. Turn this thing over. You don't need to do the entire bottom bracket. There's no need to. There's a thin, like you paint it on. Less is more, you don't need a whole lot. So now that's that on, that's on there, put it back in the bag. So now, I think I will apply it to both parts. So it, it goes on almost like glue, but basically Loctite, I'm sure you guys are familiar with Loctite. They make glues as well. This is just a different kind of adhesive. It's an adhesive that allows you to later on remove the part if you need to without any kind of ill effects. I'm gonna use the light from my phone on this side so I can see where I'm applying this. Like the cool thing is there, there is an actual groove in the frame that shows you where the bottom bracket with, 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 will sit. They actually machined it. In a nozzle here to kind of rub this adhesive around because I can't really see. There we go. So it's about, it's about a centimeter, the first centimeter of the circle of the frame. Make sure it's up there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on, this is the sleeve here. This is where the Loctite goes, right there. That's the, that's the part that's going to be on the outside of the, of the bottom bracket shell. That's where you need it. You don't need it on the whole thing. I'm just going to put a thin film on here. And this is a non-permanent thing. I'm using 40, 641, that's what they recommend. It's not very thick, because this, the, the tolerance is here, this is just really extra security. Now, some people don't use that, which is fine, but then you run the risk of having creaks down the road. It cures within 24 hours, it takes about 20 minutes to set, but with the activator, it will speed up that process, because I want to deliver his bike today. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to set it in the hole. Let me move the frame here. From this side, I'm going to use my hands and just so it just, it's just sitting there now. Straight. The press will finish the job. One side is in. And then this side, which is the drive side, I'm going to put the same just right here, you gotta make sure this is clean. Make sure I didn't touch grease and touch it. Okay. The only reason I'm using Loctite is because that is recommended by the manufacturer that makes the bike, and it's recommended by the people that made the bottom bracket. That means they've had enough issues to where 
it's just a good idea, so why not? So you can see I'm lining that up to just make sure it's straight. Right there. And I'm going to use a press. Let's see how this lines up. This came with part two. I want to make sure it's going to press. So I'm going to go this way. That looks a little big. Uh, that's the one that came with the drift. Let's put that in there. You got to make sure you get the right size. I want it to press without tilting on me. There. Eh, that's still hitting the shell. It's really important that you get the right size. I want something that will press. That should work. It should get the whole cup in right there. So I think this fits better. You can see that little indentation there goes in the hole right there, and that keeps it flat. So now, that's just the adapter that for the cups. This is the tool. You can, this is a headset press. You can use anything. Don't need, this is not made by Park Tool. I've, I've always had this, and I may not even need those cups because you can see how this graduates depending on the different sizes. It's designed to fit a lot of different sizes. Put that in there. Okay. So now this one will fit right on here and go in that hole right there. So I want you to watch right here. That's the line. That's how much. That's about almost a centimeter. You see it? This is the line going into the frame. Maybe I should shed some light on the subject. I just can't really hold the light right now. Um, but anyway, you can see it. Let me check. I'm hearing too much creaking. Don't like that sound. Uh, looks pretty good. As you press the bottom bracket, you want to make sure it is going in straight. So if you watch me, I speed this up, but you see me checking with the light. It'll creak a little bit because the tolerances are very tight. You got aluminum against plastic because carbon is basically plastic. Just make sure it's going in straight and not at an angle. That's what I'm checking that you see there. You don't need to be in a hurry. You just got to you do it a little bit. You check and make sure everything's still going in like you want them to. So I'm doing this side where you see, so both of them are being pressed in the right side more than the other. And then I end up flipping it around and putting the tool on so the side. So I back this up a little bit because I don't want to press that anymore. It's already flush. The other side is pressed in. So I'm going to put the blue tool on this side. So all I'm doing is pressing from this side. So when I press on this side. And the reason side, it's popping is because the tolerance is so tight. Very close. So when I press on that side, I bit. loosen the opposite side. And press that. Watch. I, lo go. I will loosen this side closer to you, and then I continue to press on that side. That so means basically this other side will not be getting stops, any pressure. You're done. You get it to where it stops. Um, There's no more creaking, no pops, no nothing. Because of done. my concern about the popping, that's why you saw me go alternate sides. I spoke with the Savello boys, and they told me to kind of look out for that, but... You know, carbon is really another form of plastic. And so I just didn't like the sound. But the popping, they said, was because the tolerances are so tight. This bottom bracket is made right. What that means is this bad boy won't creak because it's so tight that when you put it in there, it is basically scraping, scraping. against the plastic as it goes in. That's what that popping sound is when you press it because the, the non-drive side of the bottom bracket is slightly bigger than the drive side. That's why it's important that you read the instruction to know which side of the bottom bracket sleeve you put in there. So the drive side went in easier than and the non All I did was I did it until that popping stopped. And you can see it is flush with the frame. So I'm going to move the bike here so you can see it. I will leave the stand in there. I mean the, the press in there because I want you to see it up close. I'm hoping I can get a good shot of it. Yeah, that's a good shot. You can see this was this was like almost a centimeter when I started, like the thickness of here. That's how much is in the frame 
from where my finger is, that much is in the frame and it's flush with the frame. I did it until that plastic popping sound stopped. And it was important to pay attention to that because if it goes in at an angle, you can ruin the frame. So you need to make sure it's when you start it that it's straight. That's why I started and it I'll by show hand. show you this side first. This side went in a lot easier. This is smaller. Yeah. Let's see. The drive side was now. easier. So it's a see job that? that requires some patience. This side went in a lot easier. It's flush. No gaps. And so the, so I'm just going to go ahead and continue to install. But that's how you install a press fit bottom bracket. It is important that you use the right tools. Let's move this up a little bit. It's also very important that you pay attention to the things that I pointed out. You want to make sure those cups are going in straight. Doesn't matter what material your frame is made of. You want to start it straight. And as you press, you want to make sure there's no rocking that may put it in sideways because you can ruin your frame and you can ruin the, ruin the, part, the part. We waited almost two weeks for this bottom bracket. So it basically when it gets in there, it doesn't move anymore. Like right now I try to tighten that, nothing. So I know it's in there. 